Good evening. Welcome to the Northampton City Council meeting of January 17th, 2013. My name is Bill White. I'm the council president. I preside over these, these proceedings. Uh, we will start with public comments, and we're going to get the public comment sheet. In the meantime, I'm going to lay out the rules of, of decorum. Um, we ask that speakers keep their comments to three minutes. Uh, uh, I'm not an ogre. I'm not. If you, if it looks like you're wrapping up, I'll allow you to run over a little bit. Um, but if you're, if you're filibustering and you plan on running over, you'll be ruled out of order and subject to uh, not be able to speak before this body again. Um, the you're allowed to speak on any issue on any topic. It doesn't even have to be anything that we're deliberating. Just understand that the counselors are not allowed to comment or respond. So if you're asking questions, they'll stand as rhetorical. Um, first up, Ed Etheridge. Good evening, Ed Etheridge. I represent Lakeford Community, which has applied by petition for a zone change for a parcel of property at 716 Bridge Road. I know the council is familiar with it, and I'm here again just to encourage uh, the council to support it. Uh, tonight, it's to change the zoning on the adjacent parcel that they purchased to URB to match their current zoning so that they could do the necessary investigative engineering design work to see if they could develop that site to increase the size of the Northampton community for senior living options in Northampton. As the council knows, it's often referred to senior living as the uh, industry of the 21st uh, century. Um, the projects uh, provide not only homes for Northampton residents, but for the parents of Northampton residents. They have no street maintenance that falls on the city, no street lights, um, no kids in the schools, but they pay the full tax rate. And so they are a good boon to the local economy. So I would encourage your support of that. As you know, before any project could be done, and the reason they have to undertake the engineering and landscape studies, is because under the city ordinances, Chapter 261 will not allow any project to be developed that allows stormwater to go off-site. And under the zoning chapter, Chapter 350, no project can be developed without site plan approval from the Planning Board, which has as it approval criteria, its approval criteria, that there can be no adverse impact on municipal uh, services or neighboring properties. So those two things will be addressed if the engineering and design studies suggest that a development could possibly be put there. So I would encourage your support of this change so that Lathrop could undertake that examination. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, Rob Postal, please. Hello, I'm Rob Postal, and I live at 44 Washington Avenue in Northampton. Tonight, one of the items on the agenda is the order to accept a donation of trees from Andrew Putnam and myself and other volunteers. Andrew and I are offering to make this gift in hopes of mitigating a very serious problem. The shade trees that line Northampton streets are being removed at a much faster rate than they are being replaced. From year to year, the number of trees removed and the number of trees planted varies, so exact numbers may not be available. But on average, by my very unofficial estimate, about 70 more trees are currently needed just to keep up with the current losses. We hope this order will be approved and we will be able to make a small but significant contribution towards increasing the number of trees planted. If anyone wants to contact me, my contacts are online attached to the documents as part of the order. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Barbara Wachowska. Thank you. Um, I'm Barbara Rakaska of Florence Road in Ward 6, and I just want to invite the public to an informational forum on the um, concerns and speeds on Route 66 from Northampton to Florence. This is for informational purposes only and for the public to let the counselors know what, what is happening on Route 66 with the speed limits. 
Uh, there seems to be some problems with it being at 25 miles an hour, and I'm hearing talk that it needs to be raised. Um, the facilitators are uh, City Council President Dwight, Bill Dwight, David Stevens, a Ward 6 resident, and City Councilor Mary Ann Labarge, and it's being put on by the Ward 6 Association. I would like to invite the whole public. It is Wednesday, January 30th um, at 7 p.m. at the Ryan Road School, and there is a snow date of Wednesday, February 6th at the Ryan Road School at 7 p.m. I would really hope a lot of people attend this because Route 66 has become a really dangerous road. Down, uh, up by the Loudville Bridge, coming down around that way, and also down here by Smith College. There's a lot of families and a lot of kids, and people are speeding all the time. So please come and voice your concerns. Thank you. Chuck Bowles. I defer. I'm here representing the bid. So you're, ah, <coughs> you're just signing in then. Just listen. Okay. Well, thanks. That's the shortest one you're going to have. That was, that was <laughs> Betsy Stone. I'm Betsy Stone, a Florence resident and uh, the chair of the Arts Council in Northampton. And the Arts Council is here to request that the financial order, which I believe you were to consider uh, on a second vote this evening, um, uh, regarding the tourism gift account be referred back to the Arts Council for, so that the Arts Council board can have the opportunity to review the wording of that gift account. Um, I don't know if there's anything else I should say about that. Thank you. That says a lot. Thank you, Betsy. Uh, Greg Jones. Good evening. Um, Greg Jones, uh, Graves Avenue resident. Uh, there's a bunch of Graves Avenue residents that are here this evening um, because there's a vote on a parcel of land at the end of Graves Avenue that is um, that the planning board has um, made a proposal to purchase from Historic Northampton. Um, I want to thank the board, uh, City Council, for pushing back uh, their vote and letting us have enough time to meet with Wayne. Uh, we did meet with him. We had a spirited uh, two-hour meeting and uh, vigorous. Uh, Twenty-four uh, residents and owners showed up at that meeting. Um, Twenty-three uh, of those 24 um, are not in favor of the land purchase. Uh, what we are here to do today and try to put forth to the city is a continuation of a private-public partnership that we started with the city when we renovated our street, uh, put in curbs and sidewalks, uh, and renovated the street itself. And we purchased um, the trees on our street, uh, raised $10,000, uh, and put in ornamental fruit trees. And it's nice to be following a gentleman who's saying that we need trees. Um, the lot at the end of our street does have trees. We met with the Smith Arborist. Uh, there are 14 beautiful trees there, a lot of trees that probably samplings, saplings that need to come down, but it is worth saving. The proposal that uh, the planning board is making today um, has no corroborating studies to support it. Um, and speaking with Director Fiden, um, this was an opportunity that was made uh, by him approaching Historic Northampton and asking them if they'd be willing to sell the property so that there's no time sensitivity around this purchase. The Historic Northampton would put that sale off for as long as necessary. They're willing to partner with us um, in our effort to maintain that green area, but also just um, to study the effects of this project. Graves Avenue is past the tipping point. Um, many of our residents, two, three, or four nights a week, have to park on Union Street. Um, what looks like a very innocuous um, proposal actually would be opening our street up from Bridge Street all the way to Graves Avenue. And although it looks like the prairie land sometimes at 3 o'clock when the school is out, I can tell you that 
um, owners and residents who are coming home from work at 5, 6 o'clock in the evening and not being able to park, or when the bars let out and there are 21 bar restaurants within four blocks of us. It's very difficult. I want to thank you and uh, offer to um, stay if you had any questions that you'd like me to ask. If not, um, there are other people here to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Perfectly timed there, Greg. I, I don't know if you rehearsed. It's <laughs> well done. Uh, Holly Mott, you're next. It doesn't start till you start speaking, so it's... <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is Holly Mott and I live at Six Graves Avenue. Uh, at our meeting with Mr. Fiden, we heard repeatedly that no plans existed yet for this walkway or any other project. We were repeatedly told that this was merely a case of land acquisition opportunity, one that Mr. Fiden didn't want to miss. I think we can all see that there would be no value in acquiring this land unless there were plans to develop it. And in this case, the development is a proposed sidewalk shortcut. We're all asking why. What is the need that this solution is looking to fill? Where are the voices crying out for a sidewalk at the end of our very narrow, very congested one lane street? A one lane street that already provides a shortcut to the school for bikes and pedestrians, all 15 of them. The voices I hear crying out daily are those of the parents who need to drop their children off in the morning out of their cars on their way to work, or just simply because they don't feel safe with their children walking to school on their own yet. Bridge Street School has serious issues with safety during pick up and drop off every morning and every afternoon. If you haven't witnessed it yourself, I encourage you to make a point of passing by at 845 any morning of the week. I do so regularly on my way to work and I gasp and cringe daily. Parents struggle to safely drop their children off amidst buses and other traffic and are often breaking school rules to get as close to the main office door as possible, suffering the curses of teachers and other parents as they bottleneck the back entrance to the parking lot. I know this because my own daughter was a student and a walker at Bridge Street School for the six years that we lived on Eastern Avenue. I had to be at work by nine and this meant dropping her off from my car amidst all that I've mentioned here. She's a junior in college now, and what was the reality then is still the reality today, and it's worse. The sidewalk will become the next place where parents will be dropping their children off to school and picking them up. This mm -hmm. will be the next closest and least monitored place to pull up to the curb and let their children out safely at the start and end of the day. Graves Avenue can't handle this kind of traffic. I'm all for safer and more convenient alternatives for vehicle drop-off and pick-up at the school, but not on a street where it would increase already congested traffic, lead to accidents to the entrance of Market Street, and potentially lead to pedestrian accidents as hurried parents rush to turn around and exit the street. It's a bad plan. It doesn't answer the cry that is being called out so loudly. And the reality of what will happen is that graves will open up as an accessible place to drop off your child from a car. And in a city that suffers deaths and accidents to pedestrians annually on Elm, Main, South, Pleasant Streets and others, let's spend our tax dollars building safer sidewalks where they're needed. This plan is selfishly motivated and serves no existing need to the residents of our city. Thank you. Wow, it's... And I did <laughs> 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 ben Babbitt. <laughs> ben Babbitt here. There you go. Okay. I was also going to speak on Graves. Um, I was going to speak concerning uh, the, the tree situation. I was wondering if I could defer to someone else from Graves. Sure. Uh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Anyone's welcome to relinquish their time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Um, hi. Uh, my name is Phil Cass, uh, former resident of Graves Avenue and present owner of property on Graves Avenue. Um, I, I don't know too much about city government and, and, and process, but um, when I heard about this, and I, I think is the city planner uh, was at that meeting, and I heard about the so-called plan a couple of days before uh, that meeting, and I, we asked the planner as to what the plan was, and basically he said, we don't really have a plan, but Previously, we've had situations where there was a lot of public outcry, and ultimately, 
uh, once we did what we planned to do, people were happy with it. Well, I, I, I guess that's just a little was a little puzzling to me that a city would be uh, allocating their money so based on such vagaries. And when I guess I tried to pinpoint them, the, what I what I heard was that they were interested in a shortcut <clears throat> for the children at the school, and that he had this idea had been discussed with the previous principal and present one, neither of which was at the meeting, and um, nor was there a, a single parent of any child at that meeting, and I don't know if there's any here tonight or they've previously spoken. I guess all I can say is that it seemed um, puzzling to me that, you know, t aside from the interests of the people on Graves Avenue and the dangers that the street presents and the potential lawsuits that could happen to the city when someone backs out of a driveway in a crowded one-way street. I mean, it's easy after the fact to say, oh, we didn't think about that. But, you know, in these days where crazy tragedies happen in towns that never would expect them, it seems almost preposterous to me that we have a non-plan based on an idea of convenience to provide further access to a school that uh, just opens it up to all sorts of dangers. I, I would think that the money could much be better spent making the school safer and more secure and not open back alley entrances to, to the masses. It wouldn't be assured when I lived on Graves Avenue, unfortunately, you know, there was an alley next to my house. Oftentimes I would find cardboard boxes and alcohol bottles. It's, it, it is, it's not the way to go. It's not a, a plan. It's an ill-conceived plan. There's no plan. And it doesn't address the so-called interests that have been put, put out there, which is a safety of children. And convenience is, in hindsight, when people look back and say, well, that was convenient, but let's talk to our town, town council about uh, what lawsuits we're now facing out of, uh, out of a convenient choice. Thank you very much. Chris Shadoyan. Hi, uh, I'm Chris Shadoyan. I was asked by Greg to talk a little bit about parking on Graves Avenue. My experiences, uh, I think, uh, taken into account a lot of other people's experiences. Um, I, I've lived in Northampton since 1996. And uh, I moved to number two, Graves Avenue, which is right on the corner. And it experiences both the car traffic of Graves and Market and the foot traffic and uh, also smoking customers of Joe's. Uh, and I spent my first year as a Graves resident pleading with the guys who pick up trash and recycling uh, on a daily basis to come later than 5 AM. Um, because you know, since there's not enough room for even a Honda Civic to back up and turn around on Graves, they'd, they'd back their trucks up the street, beeping the whole time, 5 AM. Uh, and I managed to get them to agree to show up after 7, which means that sometimes I'm lucky and they show up around 7.02. Um, but again, I want to talk mostly about parking. That leads into this. Um, and within two months of moving in to number two, uh, the front fender of my car had a huge hole in it. Um, I have no idea if it was a random car or one of the trash trucks, a drunk guy with a hammer. Um, no one took credit, so you know, since my car wouldn't pass inspection, uh, I had to pay for it out of pocket, which uh, cost me one person more than the amount of money this plant purchase uh, will cost the city of Northampton. Uh, and the building that I live in, sorry, uh, which houses numbers two, four, and six, which Holly lives in, uh, has no off-street parking. I think it's one of the few houses on the street that has n none whatsoever. Um, and we have about eight residents, which I guess is, is more like seven, because one's in college and one's a baby. Um, but we often can't park on Graves at all. As Holly said, uh, we often have to uh, park on Union, even when we're carrying stuff. Um, and even that's so crowded that I've had to park right next to Bridge Street School. And under those circumstances, I guess a walking path could be helpful. Um, but, um, uh, you know, when, I'm sorry, I lost my place. Um, when I, when I do have groceries, I, I have almost no choice but to park illegally in, in the spot that's right at the end of Graves and, and hits market, uh, which is often taken up already by someone picking up food from Joe's. Um, and, you know, I've actually been yelled at by people for parking in that spot. Um, one guy um, who was eating at Joe's actually a 
accosted me and, and uh, swore at me for boxing him in. Even though I, I was just dropping off groceries, I couldn't find any place to park. Um, you know, and I asked him, uh, you know, if he lived on Gray's, and he said he didn't. And, uh, you know, I told him the only reason I parked illegally is because people like him take the free spots, the rot spots the residents park in. And, and you know, he didn't really like that very much. Um, <laughs> but remembering my, my early accident and, and other reports of neighbors' cars, uh, which have been hit several times, I, when I had to buy a car, um, you know, I asked uh, city employees if it might be possible to make graves into a resident-only parking zone. I only have a short bit left. Um, and I was told it wouldn't happen. Uh, you know, and I spend about another thousand dollars a year, which means I've almost doubled the amount of money that the city's planned on personally, on a personal level, to, to park basically in this city. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think that this, this plan uh, is, is uh, not well thought out. I'm all for improving graves and improving Northampton in general. Uh, I just I just want to make sense for the residents of Graves and for the people around it. So, thank you. Thank you. And Dana Goldblatt. Hi. Uh, I'm one of the few residents on Graves that has enough off-street parking, so I'm not going to discuss any parking issues. My only concern, my main concern with this, besides my neighbors having trouble with parking in their cars, is uh, with safety of increasing pedestrian traffic down Graves the way it is now. Right now, a lot of those driveways, because of the parking situation, cars are crammed in right up against the driveways. Most of those driveways right now are blind driveways. People try to pull out slowly, but there are a lot of near misses. And when, because of the way the snow is not always shoveled or not always cleared off, we're having these near misses and we're skidding on snow while it's happening. Uh, particularly, a problem is right between, at least the problem I know about, is right between my house and the house next door. There's a tall fence there, which adds to the problem because the fence is almost up to the line of the street, so you can't see over it. So on that side, even if there are no cars there, it's still very hard for people on that side of the fence to pull out safely. The idea of increasing the number of people who are four feet and under who would be running back and forth across those driveways just terrifies me. Uh, I try to do the best I can when I'm pulling out, but the last thing I want is for more school children on my side of the street running to school or running back from school. Especially, I'm, I guess I'm more concerned about going to school because the times when people are coming, the times when we're all leaving to go to work are the same times that the kids are coming. So we're pulling out of our blind driveways at the same time that all of these kids would be walking on their way to the pedestrian path to school. If this is planned as a way to get kids to and from school, I would plead with people to try to do something about the parking situation so that it's not as crowded, the driveways aren't blind, and the snow is shoveled so that we're not skidding out blindly into school children, which seems to be the current plan. So those are my concerns about it. And I'm under my time. Therefore, very proud of myself. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's the end of the sign-up list. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak tonight? Steve Suska. Were you on the list? It's okay. Uh, Susco, Steve Susco, 754 Bridge Road, S-U-S-C-O. I'm going to be, try to be uncharacteristically brief. My comments are regarding the rezoning petition for number 716 Bridge Road on your agenda. Uh, as I have previously, and my neighbors are, were requesting that you reject the uh, rezoning petition. Uh, we don't believe the necessity is there, that we believe the timing's wrong, we believe alternatives exist, and uh, the probable negative impacts are real, great, unnecessary, and undesirable. And uh, so many hearings and meetings to this point, counselors claiming immediate passage is not only necessary and desirable, but mandated. Uh, subcommittees declining recommendations, committees tabling the matter, postponement following delay, but yet no substantive effort by you accepting Councilor Tacey to obtain enlightenment here and base your decisions on a foundation of understanding and critical analysis. This is no time for armchair counseling and winging it. 
Uh, Butters and Neighbors have been characterized as somewhere between complainers, one of your colleagues yesterday, and obstructionists, your at-large colleagues' standing opinion. My neighbors and, and uh, others don't agree. Uh, what we're doing is advocating for the situation that exists on the ground now, the impacts on us, the impacts have taken, that have taken place, and our analysis based on our long history in this area of what will become regarding these rezoning initiatives. And if this is complaining, then so be it. And if this is obstructionist, then so be it. Uh, I'd also like to remind you that the planning director has stated that uh, the rezoning initiatives are to include the entire area from the Meadowbrook Apartments all the way to the River Valley Market, which is the entirety of the Pinebrook watershed. And we're not looking at this as, a, uh, as a individual little parts that never seem to add up to what becomes the problem, and we're hoping that you will. Uh, just a few comments regarding the Lathrop community's comments this evening. Uh, the original Lathrop community establishment, in which I attended the meetings and hearings some 22 years ago, uh, the drainage plans were part of the rezoning initiative, uh, even though they eventually did become a problem. Uh, oh, I'm out of time. I'm going to give you a bit. You, you were indeed on the list, so if, you, if you've got one more minute. I just have a couple other, just a couple. I'll finish it up. Rezoning is for keeps here, and this property can be flipped. Uh, the uh, There's already a very large portion of the Lathrop community which is undeveloped and already rezoned URB and is ready. The engineering study does not require rezoning, and I will remind you that the Edlu input is still outstanding. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Yes, sir. I'm not on the list. It, that's fine. That's fine. You qualify. You're the public. Okay. You qualify. So <laughs> please give us your name and your address. Please. Yeah, my name is Andy Turret. I, I live on Graves Avenue. I'm a resident, and I just wanted to. Uh, add something that was omitted, and that is uh, there has been a, uh, an interest in uh, creating a land trust. There's 10 owners on Graves Avenue that would be interested in creating a public-private uh, relationship with the town uh, and purchasing, uh, they, they're willing to uh, invest $1,000 and purchase the property and work with uh, the city to come up with uh, some um, agreed usage. And um, that's, it, that's it. Uh, is there anyone else who wishes to? Uh, you in the white shirt first, and then, and then I couldn't see the other hand, but there was another hand over there. Okay, yes, yeah, there you are. I'm really quick. Um, That's my name fine. is Ariana. I'm from Graves Avenue as well. I just wanted I'm to. I'm sorry. What's your last name, Ariana? Adams, Greg. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I just wanted to state that the residents of Graves Avenue have done a really great job um, putting forth a really collaborative effort, effort, and we created a document, and I just wanted to urge you to read it if you have the time. That would be really great. A lot of our thoughts and statements are, are in there. Thank you. Uh, we just received the document a little late, so it's I know, I'm sorry about that. That's okay. I'm Susan Parker of 35 Graves Avenue. I'm sorry I haven't prepared anything and I came in late, so excuse me if I repeat something that my fellow residents have already said. I've lived there probably a lot longer than most of the other residents since 1982. So I've seen a lot of the changes. We used to be in the police report continuously. We no longer are. So that's made reading the paper a lot more boring, but it's much better living circumstances, believe me. I have had urinating people under my front windows. I've had vomit on my door. I've had broken windows from people coming up the street from the different uh, bars and other things down the street. I don't think you really want to open up your school system or the back of the historical society 
to a lot of extra traffic that might be bringing that type of behavior to those locations. Also during the day, there is a fence that protects those school children at this point in time and enables the teachers to keep them all in one area during recess. If you open up that whole area, again, you have not a safety issue, but a hazard that you are creating. Now it's easy to say, I'm all in support of safety for children, but this really isn't a safety issue. They were right in saying at that meeting, there really wasn't a plan. There was an aside about some <coughs> drainage issues. Where are the engineering reports on possible resolutions for any drainage issues or water in the basement of the school? We were told that maybe it's part of the sustainability project for the city to increase pedestrian walkways. We already know that that's not a good idea. I think that's been made explicitly clear by the speakers tonight that I've heard. We were also told it would be a good drop-off pickup point. Well, we've also heard that's not wise. Our street is only 22 feet wide. In the winter, you can subtract another three to four feet. Where's the safety issue for that? You can't even pass two cars coming and going at this point in time. So with all these different issues and the ambiguousness of what they're really intending to do, with a 19 and a half foot strip of land that they can't even address how it's going to be maintained, what is the overriding public benefit of this versus the detriment to the neighborhood? It's not clear. So I would ask you to please listen to what the residents are telling you. We're the ones who live there. We have to deal with this every day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else? Okay, thank you all. Uh, We'll now, uh, the secretary will please call the roll. Here. Councilor Carney? Present. Councilor Carney? Present. Councilor Carney? Present. Councilor Carney? Here. Councilor Carney? Here. Uh, we confirm that we have a quorum. Uh, Councilor Schwartz will be late. Uh, one of her children's performance at the high school. Councilor Tacey is out. Councilor Specter is out as well. Um, <clears throat> accept a motion for the approval of minutes of January 3rd. To Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? The minutes are approved. We are at this juncture with the proclamations, resolutions, awards, and recognitions. Um, seeing none, um, I would actually ask the council if they would consider moving the presentation that we have scheduled uh, later in the in the agenda and moving it up to this point. So moved. I move to accept. Oh, it's been okay. It's been moved by Council Adams and seconded by Council Labarge. Any any concerns about that? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so why don't we do that? We'll move to the presentation um, from the Northampton bid and um, and also the Committee on Disabilities here in Northampton. We, uh, Lola Kelso was not able to be here tonight, but uh, Chuck, are you serving in her role? So Chuck Bowles from the bid will uh, serve in her stead and Tori Eklund uh, from the uh, Disabilities Committee is here. Hello, Tori, how are you? Hello. So the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Good evening. About a year and a half ago, I, as a blind person, went to eat at Applebee's restaurant in Hadley and was very surprised when I was offered a Braille menu. It was a great experience for me and a great concept to be able to look at the menu on my own and not have to rely on anyone else to tell me what there was. So when I went to the next Northampton Committee on Disabilities meeting, I mentioned this. And we came up with the idea of encouraging restaurants to provide menus in Braille and large print. The Committee on Disabilities is committed to access for all. And this seemed like something that would have tremendous benefits. City Councilor Mary Ann Labarge has been a tremendous support and help on this project, and she selected, she suggested, excuse me, collaborating with the bid, and the results have been outstanding. While the Committee on Disabilities initiated this project, 
the bid executed and underwrote it. There is no cost for restaurants to participate. The bid will continue to supply braille and large print menus to all restaurants in the bid district, regardless of whether they are a bid member. There will be four large print and two braille menus for each restaurant. The large print menus will be reprinted twice a year, and the braille menus will be reprinted once a year. Costs range from $135 to $220 per restaurant, depending on the size of the menu. The bid has expressed being proud to promote accessibility by underwriting this cost and facilitating the menu's distribution to various restaurants along with the Committee on Disabilities. The following restaurants have agreed to participate thus far, and their braille and large print menus are just about ready. Some are ready and some are still in process. So these are the restaurants. Local Burger, Mama Iguana's, Paul, Paul and Elizabeth's, Pizza Paradiso, Sierra Grill, Siam Square, Spoleto, and Fitzwillies. The Braille menus are prepared by the Perkins Library for the Blind, and the large print menus were designed by a graphic designer used by the bid and printed at Paradise Copies. The Committee on Disabilities will actively participate in publicizing the, avail the availability of these menus and distributing them to restaurants. I'd now like to show you examples of the Braille and large print, large print menus that we have and answer any questions that you have about this project. We, we're passing those examples around now. Mm -hmm. And Chuck, did you want to add something to that too? The I, I just wanted to say that uh, the, the bid um, was happy to endorse this as it was unanimous, it was a no-brainer. And uh, it's nice to be recognized for doing something good. God knows we haven't had a lot of positive publicity uh, lately. Matter of fact, I was elected to come tonight because uh, most of uh, the other board members are in the bids form of the witness protection. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Chuck put a short straw and got to come. Thank you for dodging the uh, brick bats and everything. They, they always send the easiest guy. <laughs> Um, are there any questions from the, does the council have any questions about this? Uh, council of Barge, I know that you, you want to speak to this a little bit. And yes. Um, I think Tori has really <coughs> said from her heart of what has happened here. I don't have to worry about people with disabilities, people who are blind, who have to travel out of our city to find a restaurant with the Braille. Now we have several residents, I mean, seven, several restaurants in our city, and it's opened the doors where they have their rights now to be able to go into a restaurant and have a Braille menu or even the large um, printed menus, which we do have a couple of um, residents on the Committee on Disabilities who are very, very pleased with the large print. But I have to say, when Tori had brought that up at our meeting, I was just so, my heart was like, we need to do this. And she kept bringing it up about there was no restaurant in Northampton and she had to travel out of town. So, I know our wishes come true, and I want to thank the bid. I want to thank Dan Yucuzo, all the restaurant owners who have opened the doors to really make people who have several and different types of disabilities to be able to have a good quality of life. And that's our city of Northampton. Um, when we know we're going to go after something, we don't stop. There was a little break here for a while, and I had to say, I said, Tori, we're not going to let it stop. Get Dan back. Let's find out what's going on, and it moved. Right. So please let Lola, Dan, and all the restaurant owners, that all of us and all my colleagues, really appreciate what they are doing. 
Our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one, one of the things, the, the American Disabilities Act, the ADA, uh, one of the tent poles for it actually is, is accessibility, of course, but the principal focus is dignity in the and providing an, an opportunity for dignity for someone to um, enjoy their lives without the ignominy of coming in a back door or asking for someone to read them a, a, a menu or enduring some other hardship simply because they, even though they could be easily rectified. And um, so I'm very grateful for the Committee on Disabilities acting on this, the bid. I think that uh, this speaks very well for the community and, and also the participating restaurants, and I look forward to it uh, being all the rage in the restaurants throughout the, throughout the city. Any other comments? Tori, thank you very much for, for you. your efforts and energy and your presentation. And, and Chuck, please uh, extend our, our gratitude to the bid. When, to the when, board, when, I shall. You, when you see them in that next that week smoke filled room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you all. Uh, next up on the, oh, uh, no, those are for the, we can give those to Council of Arch. Actually, Tori, do you want the menus back or should we give them to Council of Arch? I, I need them. Thank all right, we'll give them to Council of Arch. Thank you. Uh, next up are the appointments, elections, and public hearings. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I've missed the one minute announcements. What was I thinking? Uh, any councilors have any one minute announcements? Dare I ask? No. Okay. Looks like we don't. Okay. So now we're up to appointments, elections, and public hearings. Uh, there's uh, there's a couple of reappointments. I move to take the I move to take the reappointments as a group. The motion to second. <laughs> uh, discussion. All those in favor of taking those as a group of the reappointments, uh, please say aye. Aye. It's a group. Aye. Okay. I have a letter here from uh, Paul Specter. You all have in uh, related to uh, Brian Adams. Uh, Paul simply says, hi, Brian Adams is a great member of the CPC. By all accounts, he's dedicated and focused and an important member of the group. He does want to serve another turn, so I suggest that the council meeting on January 17th, that in keeping with our usual policies, the rules be suspended and his name be brought up for a vote on reappointment. Thank you. Point, point of order? Sure. Do we have a motion on the floor? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, no. that, that, yeah, I'm sorry. You're right. That should have been included in discussion. So is there a motion on these? Oh, we're taking them as a group. We're taking them as a group now. now right, but we need to suspend because the ones that are reappointments, you still have to suspend Rule 30. Second. There's a, a motion to suspend rules. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, move to take the reappointments as a group. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. So. <laughs> Is he Mr. Chance? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Is there any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. The reappointments, the, those good people were reappointed. And those good people, by the way, I should uh, <coughs> mention is uh, that it's Brian Adams to serve on the, community, uh, the Preservation Committee, um, term to expire January 2016. <laughs> Uh, then a reappointment to the Conservation Commission of Kevin Lake, and his term will expire on March 20th, uh, March 2014. And then a reappointment to the Human Rights Commission with Sarah Weinberger, uh, her term to expire uh, December 2015. Now there's a new appointment to the Agriculture Commission uh, submitted by the mayor. Uh, I would like to, that's um, Stan Zawilke. And I'd like to move to refer that to appointments and evaluation. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's referred. Thank you all. Now comes that magical time in our meeting where we recess for finance, and I turn into a lowly vote. <laughs> I'm the chair to Councilor Murphy. Councilor Murphy, can you call the roll of finance? Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Here. Councilor Present. So we have a very short meeting tonight. All we have is uh, that in accordance with Mass General Law 44S subsec or 44 subsection 53 regarding insurance proceeds, the City Council appropriates 
$111,241.50 of insurance proceeds received from property physical damage claim from September 18th flood water uh, damage at the wastewater treatment facility to the sewer enterprise fund account repair and maintenance of buildings. Move, and to, move to recommend. Move to recommend. Oh, we got a motion in a second. And if you all remember, um, this is just the settlement for the damage down there. It will just replenish that account. The work's already been done. So exactly. Is there any discussion? No? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And this is in favor of a positive recommendation. Council. And uh, that's the only thing on our agenda for tonight. So do we have a motion to? Uh, I move to adjourn. Adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Right. Here it comes. Here it comes back. Um, we're back on the regular meeting. It's hard to tell. I know for those of you who are first watching this, this is this looks like Shriners in a tiny car. Um, <laughs> I, may take offense. <laughs> I was only speaking with, with the highest regard. The uh, we have the reports on committees. We did take the reports as a group. Second. All those in favor of taking these as a group? Aye. Uh, all those in, uh, I Will we wait. accept minutes? Yes, I'm waiting for a uh, motion for the acceptance of the minutes. Second. Second. Uh, all those in favor of accepting these minutes? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> the minutes are approved from the various subcommittees. Uh, we've done the pre presentations. Now we're up to, hey, that financial order. You may recall this was a while back. <laughs> Something that was just about 15 seconds ago. <laughs> yes. uh, in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 3, regarding insurance proceeds, the City Council appropriates uh, $111,241.50 of, of the insurance proceeds received from the property physical damage claim for the September 18, 2012 flood at the wastewater, uh, the wastewater treatment facility to the Sewer Enterprise Fund account. Repair and maintenance of buildings. Move to approve. Second. Any deeper discussion than the one in finance? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Does, would anyone object to a second reading on this since it? No. It's going there anyway. So I move to suspend rules for second reading. Second. All, right. All those in favor of suspending. Aye. 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 I move second reading. Second. Second. Right. It's, so this, this is just an insurance settlement, basically. It's, it's, it's for us to collect the money. It's, it's us to authorize to receive the funds. Just put yeah, I think that's. Let's, yeah. let's do that. Otherwise, the insurance company. This yeah, seems kind of silly. Right. Yeah. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. All right. It's passed. Now that means we need. To, do we need to um, have an enrollment committee? Uh, Council of the Barge, will you serve an enrollment committee? Surely. Congratulations. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Foreman, <laughs> something to put in your business card. <laughs> um, so we can start writing. This is upon the recommendation of planning of the Office of Planning and Development and Finance Committee, uh, whereas the city's tourism gift account, 2585175, allows planning and development to accept donations to make Northampton more attractive, and whereas September 20th, two, uh, 2012, City Council authorized funds to be used from this account for artistic wayfinding signs, for the Main Street Rail Bridge and whereas on April 19th, 2012, the City Council heard a presentation on gateway signs from the Ad Hoc Gateway Beautification Committee. Now, therefore, be it ordered that the City Council authorizes the City, acting through its Office of Planning and Development, to expend funds from the tourism gift account for gateway and other signage, for pavement markings, for plantings, and for street and multi-use trail furniture and improvements. And further, the City Council authorizes the city acting through its Office of Planning and Development Department of Public Works to accept gifts of personal property for these purposes. We'll hear a motion. I'd like to move to commit to the Arts Council. Second. The motion is to refer, essentially, this uh, to the Arts Council. Is there any discussion? Uh, Councilor Adams? Just that I looked at the, the rule. Um, there's, there's no prohibition against doing that on either first or second reading in either Robert's rules or our own council rules. Mm -hmm. so, uh, for the public's edification. And it's debatable. We do two readings uh, for each item, and this is actually the second reading, the, thereby allowing an opportunity for people to learn more if there are any questions on any resolution, <coughs> uh, survive the first vote. Uh, this is in keeping with that, the, at least this motion is. Councilor LaBarge? I have to agree with um, 
Councillor Adams. Um, I really feel that between Mary Casper's concerns and now we're hearing from the Arts Council, it <coughs> needs to go back. Any other discussion? Uh, Councilor. Uh, I just want to say that the uh, Committee on Cultural and Recreation Services met uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, uh, sadly, we, we didn't have a full committee, but it was enough for a quorum. And we also were locked out of this room, so we had to move the, move the meeting. I got the text. We, we, yes, we put plenty of notice up, but uh, we had a long discussion with representatives from the Arts Council. And uh, I think they still have, um, I think there's some significant concerns with with just process here, and uh, um, I don't uh, envy them for for trying to trying to work on this financial order. But I, they want an opportunity, and I think we should give them the opportunity. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion to refer it to the Arts Council, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? It is done. Um, this is upon the recommendation of the Board of Public Works and the Tree Committee, and whereas the Board of Public Works recognized the importance of continuing the replacement of the city's shade trees, and whereas the mission of the Northampton Tree Committee is to increase, protect, and maintain the health, beauty, quantity, diversity, and vitality of Northampton's trees for the benefit of its citizens and future generations, and whereas on October 24, 2012, the Board of Public Works accepted the Tree Committee's recommendation to approve the request of planting of trees on city property with a waiver of the requirement of, of the certificate of insurance, planting of the trees and be, uh, to be completed by Andrew Putnam, Rob Postal, and other volunteers. And whereas the Board of Public Works and Tree Committee recommend the City Council accept this donation, the Northampton City Council gratefully accepts gifts uh, as gift the donation of trees to be planted to the City of Northampton in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. <laughs> gifts of uh, tangible personal personal property any motions here move to approve second uh council of yes um council president maybe you could explain something for me all right if they're volunteering and apparently the board of public works has done a waiver of requirement of the um, certificate of insurance mm -hmm. say with volunteers doing this and they should get hurt who's responsible uh, is I understand the liability is presumed and assumed by all the parties but I'm I'm not sure but um, uh, to the extent that this it, now mr. postal's here maybe he might be able to answer some of the questions if you want to see you uh, Council James. I, I might be able to answer your question uh, I know that the city has a release of reliability waiver form that it will typically ask volunteers to sign before uh, working on um, in the public way, uh, and that so that's different from requiring the uh, volunteers to provide insurance to the city. Um, so that's what I believe was waived by the board. Uh, so that I think the city would still require a release of liability for the from the volunteers before they worked on the public way. Thank you. And I, I, I this, you know, we've got two different, uh, two different kinds of, of, uh, of waivers here. And I think that that can be, uh, one is the volunteers being waiving liability of the, of the city and the other is the city waiving uh, the requirement to have liability insurance if you're a volunteer. Thank you. Um, Mary points out that this is the first reading so that we could investigate that in, uh, uh, in, in by February 7th. Thank you. If, if that's a concern, so that'll be noted. We'll, we'll, fo we'll follow up on that and see what. Thank you. Any other discussion? Yeah. Uh, Council Premier Bay. These, are, these aren't art trees, right? These are real trees? These are bona fide, legitimate, okay. arborist approved trees. All right. Yes. Yes. Good. Yes. <laughs> and and yes. as I understand, in consultation with a very highly qualified arborist, um, you know, historically, um, city trees were decimated like trees that used to be called, the streets that used to be called Elm Street, where they used to be lined with elm trees. But the thing is, is they were single species that were subject to. Dutch to uh, yeah, infestation and, and blight, and they easily transmitted it. Now there's new criteria for planting trees, and I believe that uh, these these people are cognizant of all the issues associated with that, and and once again restoring 
um, a shady treescape on, on streets. I think I, I see no downside other than raking. Yeah, uh, Councilor Adams. I'd like to thank the volunteers. I, I agree. Uh, an extension of the volunteers in the, in the community, the fact that the community, and we've, just, we've heard a lot tonight of, of community involvement and engagement on issues trying to resolve problems. And it's, it's pretty heartening to see this. I'm, I appreciate it. And, and, and apparently so the other counselors. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. This is upon the uh, recommendation of the Office of uh, Planning and Development. Uh, this is this. Uh, now I don't know if you guys want me to read this order again. This is up before us for about the fourth time, but um, I can if you'd like. This is the Graves Avenue. Order. This is uh, this is Graves Avenue. Uh, what's your pleasure? I can read it if you like. No. Uh, we should move it. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, uh, is there a motion? Uh, yeah, I'd like to make a motion to postpone indefinitely. I'll second that motion. The motion is to postpone indefinitely, uh, uh, which I believe is not debatable. Uh, I think, I think uh, it it's might not be. a tabling, so it's, but it's, it's, it is debatable. It is. A parliamentarian informs me, so it is debatable. So, Councilor Freeman Daniels. I just I want to speak on this um, so I, I I understand if this this uh, motion doesn't won't carry the council but um, that's my pleasure is really to or, or what I'd really like to have happen is to have this uh, not brought before council until a real plan is developed by the OPD regarding um, what the possible benefits of this purchase are um, I know it's not a lot of money but uh, there is also really no time sensitivity here. Uh, this purchase was initiated by OPD. Um, it can be uh, the, the, um, the Historic Society is not going to sell to uh, another party. Uh, I don't think there's any risk of that. And if they will, uh, it will be to this, to this land trust, which, will, which is, has come together very quickly in the spirit of collaboration to work with the city. Um, to, to try to make sure that the residents work together with the city to, to have an equitable solution. Uh, and I think that, uh, I, don't, I do not believe that this is an opportunity the city's going to miss. And I also do not believe that it is, uh, that there's a good plan. I also am skeptical whether there's actual need. Um, uh, students now can walk from the end of Graves to Bridge Street uh, through, a, through, a, um, through the edge of a driveway. Uh, and it's it's sort of a um, unofficial way of getting to to Bridge Street School, and to make it a public uh, way will have the kind of will 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 be so public it'll have I think a lot of the negative effects that we saw in Ridgewood Terrace and uh, and and Graves and will really affect Graves Avenue. So I I, I would like to urge the council to postpone this indefinitely. Uh, Councilor Adams, and Councilor if we postpone this indefinitely, it'll it'll die at the end of the session, right? Correct. Conceivably. So, rather than if we vote it down, it can't be brought back. But if it if we both if we vote to postpone indefinitely, if there's a plan or something else, um, the the it can be brought back by the Office of Planning and Development. So uh, that's just that's just I think that's the distinction between voting it down and voting it to postpone before indefinitely. before the end of December, right? Before the end of December. Um, <clears throat> I I um I would be against this this acquisition simply because it's a it's an opportunity to acquire land it doesn't make it a good one, um, <clears throat> and and it, I'm persuaded partially by what what I heard from the current residents, but also for future residents. I'm not sure if there would be a benefit to doing this at any point. Certainly not without a traffic study. Certainly not without a plan. It sounds like there are considerable safety issues potentially, um, if uh, if the street were allowed to continue on to to. To Bridge Street, and also there is the Ridgewood Terrace problem. Um, for me, it's telling that 23 out of 24 citizens, as Mr. Jones stated, were against this, and um, and I, I'm not sure this is necessary at all. Um, pedestrians can use it, so that's a good thing, and I, and I don't think that that's going to go away anytime soon. So I, I don't support this, and uh, I'm undecided on, on whether or not I'm going to vote to uh, support the indefinite postponement because I'd like the opportunity to vote it 
down for good today. Um, but I'll, I'll take that when it comes. But I don't support this. Thank you. Council LeBarge? Yes. Um, I read the whole layout from the Graves residence. I was here early at City Council Chambers and read through it. Where was best practices? I feel that the residents were left behind, and that should not be happening. Being involved in best practices, many people throughout the community were very concerned that they were not part of the process. And this is the process. The people are speaking. I've gone through this type of situations on my ward with safety. Safety with families, um, with people who walk their dogs and so forth. And I know Graves Avenue. I have relatives who live in Ward 3. I'm just not happy that there was no communication in working together as residents and the planning department. I have to agree with Councilor at Large Adams on I'm not happy with this when I feel that residents are just completely not involved in a situation that could be very, very serious. And I did hear one resident, and I have great concerns about the fencing and about children. And we need to keep our children safe. I, I, I'm just not happy with this whole, this whole idea. And to me, is it worth the $1,000? I think that the neighborhood wants to get together and work it out and pay the hundred dollars i mean the thousand dollars and you probably would make something really enjoyable for the neighborhood i, I can't support this any other discussion uh, point of information Councilor freeman daniels i'll direct it to you being the ward counselor and just for the record um as the rules stand now i'm i'm constrained and not allowed to opine or offer an opinion. I'm allowed to vote, so you get a sense of where I am when I vote. <laughs> but, um, the, what I heard described tonight actually were a number of issues that actually are violation of standing law, things like parking up to the edge of driveways, which I believe uh, there's a two and a half foot, the three feet, okay, three foot uh, buffer supposedly established. It's uh, also, I believe a fence that is higher than three feet that goes to the edge of the road is also an obstruction violation. Um, you can't do your hedges that way and other things. So, I mean, I think however this vote ends in this evening, there are other issues that need to be addressed on that street for the, for the safety concerns that were expressed and for, for, the, for the safety of the residents. And so, um, is there any other Discussion. On yeah. this? Can I can sure, I just please. comment on that? Yeah. Um, if you're if you're addressing it to me, then yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I think um, I, no representative for planning is here today. Right. Um, but I think what if I can if I can uh, paraphrase the two hours that uh, that um, we uh, of the meeting that where Director Fiden was was present. Um, Many of those concerns he he felt were were management concerns. He felt that the city would could do creative management to deal with some of those issues. But um, you know, so far, and one of them was resident only parking. One of them was you know um, better better plowing or you know a, a better um, a better system of of traffic control. But I, I think that uh, without that, without really taking fo forward steps. Uh, there, um, oh, Graves Avenue really is at a tipping point, and to open it up, to announce that there's a public way uh, that connecting a major a major uh, center of activity before those man any any management techniques are employed, I think is is a mistake. But, and uh, my question actually wasn't offered as a counterpoint to the, what's being debated. I, I know I understand, but I'm I'm using it as an opportunity. I got you. <laughs> All right. Because, I mean, I, I think regardless, as, uh, however this vote breaks out, although I got a sense of it, but if, however this breaks out, um, those are issues that still need addressing. Those are, st those are standing issues and, and, and push this neighborhood to the tipping point that you described. Yeah, I agree. Yes, thank you. Councilor Adams. Also, I just would like to say that if there was a, a lack of process, um, 
on the part of the, of, of the Office of Planning Development, if there was. I would like to say that I, I do think that the Ward 3 Counselor did a, a, um, a good job of outreach and accessibility, so I would like to thank the Learned Counselor for Ward 3. Maverick. Maverick. Maverick takes his applause. <laughs> <Let's take> <laughs> <it. Okay. laughs> uh, I guess that's the end of debate. All those in favor of postponing this indefinitely, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? Nay. Any abstentions? All right. It is postponed indefinitely. This um, the, the, this comes with a preamble. Uh, you, you, you may have seen this. This is from um, we've already passed this, and uh, part of the problem was is that it, it literally is it's a rather massive Scribner error that can't qualify as a Scribner error. So the, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to ask that we just fix it here on the council floor as opposed to referring it back. It's simply a matter of changing all the, striking all the points where it says subcommittee and replacing it with committee because that's what's being referred to in the beginning in the, in the, in the, in the ordinance and we, we neglect to do that. Councilor Freeman Daniels. Uh, yeah, can I actually, as a sponsor, can I just move to approve first before can we get the... We need to suspend. Oh, all right, move to suspend the referral rule, which is, uh, is it 30? Yeah, that's rule 30. Rule 30. Councilor LaBarge knows that very well. So there's a motion to suspend rule 30. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of suspending the rule, please. Aye. Aye. Okay. So, so I'm going to first move on the first, move to approve on the first reading. Second. Okay. Uh, and so, so let me just say that uh, this was, if you want to know the process, here uh it's it's um it's it's one of these things where a, a small little comment comes becomes a major a major problem problem uh the mayor went with the uh parking division um shake up the mayor reviewed many of the of the parking ordinances including tpc and uh brought these before the transportation parking commission it was part of a huge package of of changes that that we sent through uh that were very well received one a commissioner on the Transportation Parking Commission said, you know, it really bothers me that we call it a subcommittee when we're not a committee. You know, we're a commission, so we should have committees. So I said, well, that's a good point. So I, I amended one of the, some of the language to get rid of subcommittee on one part and just did not do it on all the rest. And so then um, after it was passed, the uh, the people who do our, our ordinance noticed the problem and referred to asked Mary to clear it up and so now you have it before you tonight I I apologize I tried to just fix a little thing for a commissioner and then we end up uh, no good deed goes exactly yeah. end up with a snap but I, 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 I don't know if the council recalls but this was passed I believe unanimously um, and uh, and the only thing that stands in its way from being enacting is that little word to which Councilor Frank Daniels referred. Um, is there any discussion on first reading? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Um, does this will require two readings? So Suspend Rule 14. Second. All those in favor of suspending rules? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'll accept a motion on second reading. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor on second reading? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Falling off the log. Thank you. I want to thank the um, council clerk for actually this is, this uh, is Mary's. Writing, writing up the, I said, yeah, I'll sponsor it. And she actually wrote it up for me. And, uh, you know. Well, so, so Mary, uh, thank you. Mary, Mary and I have been hacking this out, trying to figure out the best way to do this without turning it. I mean, again I apologize for but this this seems to be the best solution uh, this um, once again this is something I've read multiple times this is upon the petition of uh, 10 registered voters this is the uh, changing the zoning from RR to URB for the, uh, the property abutting Lathrop community um, do you want me to read the order or no, thanks We've gone through. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Uh, well, I want to postpone. Did, did 
you I'll withdraw them. I'll withdraw them. Withdraw your motion. You're mo you moving to approve? No, you're you moving to approve. No, I was going to move. I'll second the motion. <laughs> okay, the motion is to postpone and Councilor Freeman Daniels. Uh, I just, the reason to postpone is. Uh, the, the, that I'm offering to postpone is that Ed Lou met on this, and um, I understand that the I'm not sure if the Board of Public Works has met on it yet. But um, Ed Lou, Ed Lou, first of all, we had we didn't have we were losing our our quorum. Uh, we we had a meeting that was actually a little bit um, busy, and um, we got to this near the end, and uh, councilors had to leave. Um, but we did get some time to discuss it, and uh, you know, um, I think. Because I, th I think this, op and I'll say what I said at Ed one of the things I said at Edlu, which was I think this gives us an opportunity to really look at the interaction between uh, uh, zoning and um, the, the and the stormwater permit system that we have in the city, and whether we need to fix that, uh, fix the system, or change the system uh, that of uh, stormwater uh, uh, permits and. Um, because there's no urgency, this is, or not, there does not seem to be any urgency on the part of the Lathrop community. Um, that it seems to be a, a good time to really uh, use this as a, as a test case. And uh, so we wanted to do more work on it at Edlu, and I wish that uh, the council will, would at least uh, let Edlu uh, do, do, do more of its business. Uh, let me also add, uh, as a point of information, that in order for this to to pass, it would require a three uh, supermajority vote tonight, and that's of all councilors, whether they're here or not. And um, I don't think that would be, I don't think this is the best process to proceed with a vote with the, the reduced by this many members. Uh, Councilor Adams. And on, on that vein, I spoke with Councilor Tacey by phone today, and he did say that he would like the opportunity to opine on this, and so he also um, was hoping that he'd get that opportunity. So I think postponement would make sense okay council council Tate wants to opine on this and okay that does not come as an enormous surprise Councilor Labarge yes. um, maybe you could answer this question uh -oh. if we don't vote on this this evening <sighs> how many days do we have before this goes dead and you have to go through the whole it, hearing process if again. this is postponed tonight that's another good point of information if this is postponed tonight they'll have to go back to the planning board again um, because it's run its course on the, the, the um, planning board's recommendation um, if you and if that figures in your decision whether to postpone or not if you think that's too onerous or not that can I amend my uh, motion to postpone to February 21st? So date certain? Well, I'll leave that up to whoever seconded. Was it, who seconded that? that was I you. Think That's possible. fine with me. Okay. Yeah, but does that still, excuse me, does that still cover us for the amount of days? Because if it's not passed within a certain amount of days, it's dead. It has to go back to the hearings again. I believe, hearing February 21st. Right, I, I, I'm not sure, but I don't think February 20th is this, uh, it meets the threshold. I think the, this expires sooner than that. So okay. it would have to start the process. Uh, may, I, may I offer um, some information on that? Uh, I've, uh, I, I've communicated with the director, Fiden, about this um, two weeks ago. And uh, he, I, I actually wanted to know the timeline, the specific timeline, so that we could actually know what the deadline was for the for the for the petition. Uh, and he did not give me that timeline. All he said was that if we don't pass it by the 17th, which is tonight, that it would have to go back to planning board hearings. <coughs> so, I, I believe that, uh, I believe that since the planning board was. Uh, was in favor of this, and I, I think it seems as though OPD is in favor of this, that they, that they will try to keep it alive, so they'll, they'll bring it back to planning board for a hearing. Um, so then we'll, as long as um, it's not significantly changed at planning board, I think we, should, we can still consider it. Uh, maybe we should move to commit it, and I don't think that'll kill anything, and then I'll give them just the simple move to commit rather than postpone to a certain date. Mm -hmm. If it has to go back to planning one way or another, exactly. I think the proper motion. Or I the withdraw motion. my motion. Move to commit. 
make a, a motion. motion to commit to the planning board. I second that one. The motion now is to uh, essentially refer this back to the planning board. Um, any discussion on that? Uh, no. No, no. That's Councilor Murphy, no? Okay. Uh, all those in favor of, of sending this to I, I just let me just say I just I hope I hope we don't I hope we know what we're doing here <laughs> sorry but that is a hope way beyond <laughs> I mean we we don't know what we're doing <laughs> I just want the point to know yeah. it's in all certainty that we're, we don't know what we're doing <laughs> well, it's a famous national figure Jesse. we got to do it to figure out what it is right we got to <laughs> there is that uh, you know um, yeah, we're we're working within our pay grade. Let's just say that, and the, and that and, um, but I think this is the safest recourse at this point. A commitment back. It would, as Councillor Adams says, is it, this would be going back in any event. Exactly. Yeah, so expert, tonight. The only thing I'm curious. I'm, I'm sorry. Just one question. Sure. This was also referred to the Board of Public Works, and I don't know that. I, I think it's already. It, it's still. In it's the still pending. there. Yeah. Right. So, so that's the thing. I don't want to moot. I don't want to moot those previous referrals. I don't see that this will. I mean, that I don't either. It was referred to Board of Public Works in the past. I think it still is. We're still right, but it's 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 it, yeah. <laughs> that is tricky. And uh, and the only way I'm thinking through this process is this is a referred ordinance that will expire. Right. Yeah, and, and if it, we've already decided that we're not going to act on this until we hear back from the Board of Public Works, and the last that I heard that they're not going to be hearing it at least until, I think, their February meeting. And does that then right. take us beyond the expiration of? Um, mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Which would the then put it into planning board in any in any event. I, I I think that given the fact that things are referred to committees for our basically as council for us, we so that allows us to because we don't know what we're doing, allow us to function a little, with a little more knowledge. So whatever opinions that's rendered that's pending would still hold, one would assume. Mm -hmm. unless, unless it's amended it on, in the planning board. Without, any, without planning staff or the city attorney to, 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 consult. to consult here, I'd say that that's a fine motion. I just I think that Ed Lou and the Board of Public Works should continue its its investigations right. and its work, mm -hmm. and uh, it, we might end up with slightly different map chain, right. slightly different recommendations, and we'll just leave it to the council to work it out. I guess. I I, I agree. I think Councilor Adams' punt is the best option at this point. Is my okay. all those in favor of Councilor Adams' punt? Aye. 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 So happy. Uh, They're real happy. <laughs> um, my goodness. Don't tell me that's the end of the update. Uh, there's an update from the council president, which I have none, as far as I know. Uh, Councilor uh, Freeman Daniels. Uh, I wanted to uh, let the council know that I am now the chair of the Transportation Parking Commission. Uh, it's, it's a one-year um, term, and... Uh, we did manage to elect to confirm um, three members of the parking committee or subcommittee, however you want to think of it, and uh, we still need more. We need at least one more member of the public uh, to apply. Counselors may also serve on the, on the committee if they are so inclined. Uh, and there is, there's even a little talk about Florence parking, so that might, in, that might encourage uh, some a Florence resident may consider you're saying it's, that it's right. Florence, Florence, Florence. Finally, <laughs> represents the village of Florence. Oh, okay, well, already. So uh, that's that's my update. Uh, any other updates? No, I just wanted to um, ask Councillor Owen Freeman Daniels. I know I talked with Pat Shaughnessy, and did you send her that application? Because no, I, I will. I was just. It's, working all day but uh okay but anyways my question work. was and is that because i saw it where they you will also be dealing with a committee on disabilities so we probably will have a couple of people who might be interested that's very that i think that would be looked on upon very favorably by the commission thank you any other announcements 
Uh, is there any new business that could uh, be reasonably anticipated that could be put on the agenda for the next meeting? I'll accept the motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Okay.